Hello and welcome to another edition of Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, beauty, business, money, culture, entertainment, and advocacy. And today I bring you another fabulous author from Lipstick, Lip Balm, and Literacy virtual book reading series on Facebook. She's none other than Sharon Jenkins, the author of Are You a Super Author? Wow, that title is loaded. <laughs> it's a book about tips. She featured 14 authors bringing you valuable tips that you can use as a successful author or to start your journey as a published author. So I want you to look into that also today oh my goodness the information she shared the tips she gave on the show i wanted to keep her forever on the show but unfortunately i couldn't so please join me to hear from this veteran the literary midwife that's what she calls herself literary midwife so if you have a book in your belly she can help you successfully birth that book so please you're really going to learn a lot. Take your book and pens to start taking notes in this edition. But you know, as we rule on the show, our motivational quote of the day, I took this right from a book, a book by Dr. David Oyedepo. It says, success is not a destination, but an adventure. Whoa, success is not a destination, but an adventure, meaning you can never be at the best forever. You have to keep working on your best and keep working on your best and keep working on your best. The moment you think you have arrived and stayed at the best you think you are, you are going to plateau like our author even said today. So you have to keep working at your best. If you think you have achieved a feat, great. Ooh. Keep working at it to achieve another feat and keep working and keep working because according to Dr. David Oyedepo, success is an adventure and not a destination. All right, so let's go listen to our fabulous author. Hello, my friend. How are you? Good to have you on the show. I love your lipstick. Thank you. Let me see what it is. It is. Ooh, firecracker. Firecracker. <laughs> Thank you. I see somebody joined us. Thank you for joining. Please share this broadcast out. Invite your friends to come and learn from our fabulous author today. She has a lot of experience that she will be sharing with us today. You know, I love the title of your book. <laughs> Look, wait a minute. Super author! Yes! <laughs> oh. <laughs> So thank you so much for coming on the show. You know, as we roll on the show, we start with music. So are you ready for some moves? Oh, yes. Let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, the, actually, let me see. I think the one we'll be dancing to is, okay, this one. Yes, because we can use this one. We have permission to use this one. <laughs> I love it.
Oh, I love that song. Hey, Dan. Nobody greater. Yes, nobody greater. Yes. Yeah, I love it. Everybody's enjoying this dance. <laughs> Nobody greater. Yes. Nobody greater. Love it. Nobody greater than you, just like she's saying it also in English. Nobody greater than you, O Lord. So, and it's by Falake Umosin. So, thank you so much, the gospel artist in Nigeria. Thank you so much for allowing us to use your music on the show. I love it. <laughs> ah, thanks. I can share the link um in the in the comments so you can get the, the music. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for saying yes. And thanks to Melanie Bragg, who <laughs> oh, connected God. us together. <laughs> what Thank is you so up? much, Melanie. Yes, yeah, so I'm honored to have you here on the show today. So uh -huh. um, welcome to another Lipstick, Lip Balm, and Literacy Virtual Book Reading Series here on Facebook. And our fabulous author today is none other than Sharon Jenkins. She is the author of Super Auto. Right? Did I get that right? Are you a super author? Super. <laughs> yes, super author. So, you know, and she is an inspirational principal for the Master Communicators Writing Services. So, she's not just an author, but she also helps to improve other authors. She brings other authors to the limelight through her services. I checked out your website. She does grant writing even for non-profit organizations. So she's not only helping mainstream authors, but she's also helping organizations, whether it's writing and publishing books or writing grants. You know, grant is one of the main, like the fuel of a successful non-profit organization. So if you are a non-profit or you run one and you need help with grant writing, I have the fabulous helper here in front of you today. She's a coach, and I like what you wrote about yourself, that Sharon is a literary midwife. Yeah, <laughs> I help you have that book, baby! Yes, the book, yes. So the book you are pregnant with, she will help you bring that book to life, and you and your book can be happy, you know. As the mother looks at the baby and smiles, and the baby smiles back, you look at your book and smile, and your book smiles back at you. So we are really honored to have someone with a wealth of experience in publishing, you know. Also, this show helps prospective authors and inspires them to write their book, and also give tips to those who have already done their books on how to be successful authors. So we have the perfect person here today to tell us uh, what we can do and how we can be successful as authors. So thank you so much again, Sharon. 
So I want to ask, um, why the book author heroes? You know? Well, I think it takes a lot of courage for people to write. It not only takes courage for a person to write, it takes super duper courage for a person to publish. Because when you publish, you're exposing yourself to the world. And unfortunately, we live in a world where criticism is the norm. So rather than tell you that you did a great job, people look for what you didn't do. So that's why you need some help sometimes. People who have been in the industry to, to come alongside you and help you. Because sometimes people feel because they are journalism majors, because they didn't do well in English, that their message, no one would read their message. It's not important. But if you have the desire in you to write a book, just get the help you need to get it done. It's as simple as that. And somebody is either waiting for your message or they are waiting for your obedience or you may need another stream of income and writing a book could be the answer. Wow. I mean, it's like you just said God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> With the three points. Yes. Oh, I really like, um, you know, somebody might meet, need that message or, you, you know, it might be in obedience to uh, something you need to do, you need to do to help we don't know who out there and of course book can also be a form of uh, extra income these days we talk a lot about multiple streams of income that is what is um, really out there now especially with the millennials and not only the millennials but you know those that are not millennials are on that wagon of multiple streams of income and we've heard over and over again that millionaires become millionaires as a result of multiple streams of income. So I want to ask, how do you use your book to help you have that multiple streams of income? Well, in my case, my book is a tool. It is not the money generator. I am the money generator. I'm building my brand as a person who helps authors. 14 people who have had success in entrepreneurship or who are business owners who wrote a book contribute their personal story in Are You a Super Author? And nine times out of 10, you might meet one of the people in the book, but you may not meet all of them. So that you get an opportunity to sit down and study somebody else's story so that you can jump over the pit holes, potholes in the road, or jump over that ditch that stands between you and success. So that's why I wrote the book. And I use it as a tool to help entrepreneurs who are on the in the middle there. You know, I want to write... I don't want to write, or I want to write, but what happens? What do I do with what I'm writing? And so authors, authors historically have not considered themselves to be business owners because we had this great big traditional publishing industry that embraced them and loved them and helped them to do the things that they needed to do to be successful. But when the self-publishing industry came into play, and everybody decided, I want to be an author, and I want to do it my way. You know, that DIY thing? So, uh, people are okay. doing it, but they're reaching certain plateaus, and they're stuck there, and they don't know how to move forward. So that's because they weren't made aware. They weren't exposed to that industry. They didn't understand the mechanics behind that industry. And one of the reasons why that was so is simply because when you want to hold a monopoly on something, you keep it close to you or you make it hard to enter. So when e-publishing, the e-book came a reality, 
your grandma can sit down and write a book. And it can become an Amazon bestseller. People have stories. It, the e-publishing or the e-book industry opened up a totally new um, world for those people who, those closet writers, and for people who wanted to experiment. So I use my book as a calling card for other authors. They understand that it's a business that they're going into if they want it to be a business. If they want to be effective, they're going to have to be business owners. Wow, I really love that. The, the business ideas, entrepreneurship, how to make your writing or book publishing become a business so can you give some tips on how to do this because you yeah. had said earlier that um you know because we want control as authors we keep it too close to us mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes we don't even allow others to come in so what would be your suggestions or tips for authors to help them grow and kind of know that they don't have to keep it. it I know it's hard because I've been there. <laughs> you need to grow and let go. That's what let go. talking about. Grow and let go. Well, you have to realize the first thing, a lot of people think that, oh, somebody's going to steal my material. And, and that's a legitimate concern, so I don't minimize it. But there's nothing new under the sun. And as we're talking today, the truth of the matter is I have, there are many people in my industry, but they don't have the same experiences that I have, nor do they have the same voice, nor do they have the same passion. So I'm unique in my individuality. And the same thing comes out in my writing. And the same thing comes out in your writing. If you write, you will find your tribe. If you write and you stay behind your computer, you will not find your tribe. You understand the difference. Mm -hmm. So you have to become a celebrity of sorts. And I'll be real frank and real honest with you. I um, have such a passion for what I do. I, uh, I've decided that this morning I wasn't going to let anything stop me from showing up. I've got my cough drop over here. You see, I got my water, whatever I need to do in order to show up because I have a passion for authors. Have I made a million dollars doing this? No, but I see the possibility of making a million dollars doing this with the right packaging. Same thing with your book. You have to look at your resources. You are more than just the words on a piece of paper. You are the embodiment of that idea, that, um, that message. You, you, you are the celebrity behind the message. So you have to sell yourself. You have to not only sell yourself, you have to sell your message. Now, a lot of us have a heartfelt message or we have a story, a fiction story that is hilarious. I have one of my authors who wrote a, teen, a tweens book about a cat called Duty Newman, and he is hilarious, and he comes up with superpowers, and he doesn't really know what to do with them at first, and then he decides he's going to use them for good. That's a big, huge message for teen, tweenagers right before they hit teenagers, and it's a message for adults. So... She found the courage to do it. It was a thought in her head. Same thing with you and same thing with anybody else. I think we wrestle in this world of celebrity with being good enough. Well, how do you become good enough? You don't just wake up with a natural talent. You, a lot of people have natural talents, but they don't fine tune them and polish them like a diamond. They're dark. It's dark and it, it's a piece of coal. But when you put a lot of pressure on it and when, when it crystallizes, it becomes a, a work of art. It, it literally becomes the most beautiful thing in the world. 
So you have to be willing to be teachable. You have to be willing to recognize that you don't know everything and you can't do everything. And you may be able to, but it'll take you longer to reach your goal. I know people who spend thousands of dollars because they made the right, the right choice in regards to publishing, their, the wrong choice, I'm sorry, in regards to publishing their book. They wanted to do it all on their own. So they get a product out there and that product is not sellable. Hundreds of thousands of people are publishing on Amazon daily. So how do you stand out? So what I've learned in my time as an author and as an entrepreneur and as someone who loves authors is that you got to have a plan. you got to know where you want to end up at. You want to sell a 1,000 books a year? How are you going to do it? Find out how you're going to do it. But you got to have a plan. You can't just write a book and tell all your friends and all your family, and they come and they get the book. You know what I mean? And then you get this huge boost in sales, and then next month you're expecting the same thing. And you're not, you didn't put any instruments in place to promote your book. So I hope I'm wow. answering your questions. Oh, Lord. I really love that. And you just hit home on one of the things I always tell people. You, that your friends and your families are not your customers. They are just your cheerleaders. So if they buy, if they even give you money for your product, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not just sympathy purchase. That is not where your sale, your real sale is not from your friends and your families. You know, I really love what you just said. So uh, I want to tell you guys, please, I have the link in the description. Go ahead and get this book, Are You a Super Author? 14 Stories of Super Authors Who Have Mastered Entrepreneurship. How to take your book publishing, your book writing to the next level to profit. It's not just about just reading another book, but this book is a tool to help you become a successful author. And uh, those of you on YouTube, you always also get the link in the description. And those of you at home on channel 14, thank you for watching. You're going to get the link on the screen. So follow that link to go grab your own copy. Thank you. I see um, Aneta came on. Thank you for coming on. And those who popped in, people, some people have popped in and popped out. Thank you for joining us. And... Um, you know, uh, now you talk about having a plan to sell over the year. So for someone who already has a book, there is a plan to sell. What about someone? Because we talked earlier about those who are pregnant with books, but they have not even done the book. Or some have been trying to write one book for over a year. What would be your tip for those kind of people in such category? I would not sit down and write a book knowing what I know now without having a plan as to what I wanted to do with that book once I finished the last word in the last chapter and wrote the words, the end. Because I have to speak to that book. I have to tell that book what it's going to do for me. And if I don't know what that book is going to do for me, then that book is just going to sit there waiting on me to tell it. And if I don't tell it, it'll just sit there and wait. And I'll keep expecting people to come to me and buy my book. It's the greatest book since Stephen King wrote a book. You know what I mean? It's a great book, but nobody's reading it. Well, they don't know you. They don't trust you. And they don't know your writing ability. You've got to sell people on you. So you start it when you get the idea that you're going to write a book. Um, I have a friend who showed me how she created an alternative personality on Facebook. Mm -hmm. She got Facebook friends and this alternative personality has a following and they can't wait to find out what's happening in her life. And this is a, pers a person she made up in her head. And when she did her book launch, she literally came out as that person. 
What a great marketing idea. Wow. All this before she actually published the book. I'm talking about afterwards when she did her launch, she came out as that person. But creating the persona, building the interest, all that happened while she was writing the book. Then she got feedback from her audience before she even finished the book. She knew what her audience wanted. Made all the difference in the world. You're selling a product to someone. So when you sell a product to someone, you better make sure they like it. And the way you do it is you do your market research before you actually get your product out there. Because something can be good and nobody know about it, or something can be great and nobody buys it because you're marketing to the wrong segment. So draw your tribe. Get your tribe together now. And a lot of people say, well, how can I write and how can I do it? You need to. You have to. If you do the work on the front end, you will be very pleased with what you get on the back end. Wow. I really love that idea. You know, um, like you just said about creating a tribe and even getting feedback from people before the book is released. Uh, how would you respond to those who don't feel comfortable with that or even think you are, you are crazy as an author to be giving people parts of your book to read before the book is out? Well, what, let me share something with you. There's a way to market something without sharing everything about the book. You have to be very careful about that. So get their feedback. Craft certain personas and get their feedback on those personas, those characters. You know, what would you like to see? Let's say you were writing a book about an African-American female and a white man, their relationship, the BW, um, WM phenomenal that's going on right now. So you were writing this book and you wanted to know what your audience was want, wants to read about in your book. So you would create those personas and you would build those characterizations, you know, paint the picture of the character and then paint a scenario. Now that doesn't have to be the scenario that you put in the book, but paint a scenario and get feedback from your audience. It's like you could set up an alternative story, just like a soap opera. And what you would learn from that alternative story is what really turns your audience on. Mm. You could have fun over here, when, and then you could use that research to strengthen your storyline. You don't have to share the whole thing with people. Then the other thing is, I, one of the wonders is that we always think that we know so much more than everybody else, but we want to sell what we know to somebody. Okay, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. You are an expert in your area. Yay! Congratulations. I don't minimize that. But you got to convince people that you're an expert. When you put yourself out there, especially if it's the behind the scenes kind of thing, people get excited because you have brought credibility to their input. And that starts the beginning of a trust relationship. And that's how you build your readership because they get to know you and you get to know them. For example, let's say in this book that the guy's name was Paul and the girl's name was Sandy and they met on a bus, okay? They are both in transition. They both go to college and they met on this bus and they've never seen each other before, but they're attracted to each other. So you may want to start that conversation in a Facebook group and 
paint the picture, and ask your audience, what, what's going to happen next? You see what I'm? You see where I'm coming from? Yes. You yes. ultimately have the make the decision as to what's going to happen next. You do. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. But they can contribute to your research, and then plus you know what they like. It's a win-win situation. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Remember, people, please click the link to go get your copy of Are You a Super <laughs> Author? 14 Stories of Super Authors Who Have Mastered Entrepreneurship. And also, for those on YouTube, the link is in the description. And those watching at home, the link is on the screen. I want to pause here to also make a special announcement. Lipstick, Lip Balm, and Literacy has been on for a while now. And we've had the privilege of hosting a, a lot of um, a lot of authors on this platform on Saturdays, and I'm happy to let you know that Lipstick, Lip Balm, and Literacy magazine will be launching Ooh. in January. <laughs> so what will happen is that some of the authors you've seen on the show, you will see them in print with their tips and the links to them and also get to connect with them more and also have some of these um, tips they are sharing with you in print. So if you want to, if, because it's going to be some authors, you know, because is I don't want it to be too much. So those of you who want to get the magazine, I'll be sharing information later about how to get the magazine. And for those who want to be in that magazine, you can have a paid version of getting in the magazine. I will also be sharing that link. It's not in the description link yet to follow. And I've been sharing some snippets about the magazine and some of the authors that we will eventually feature in the book. So keep watching because we still have some authors that we are bringing on the show before the year runs out. But the magazine will launch in January. We're going to be having four editions per year. Four, actually four, is it vo volume? Edition and volume, yes. Edition one, volume one is January. So we have it winter, spring, summer, and fall. So we are going with the seasons. <laughs> so fall seasons. I love so it. Best. <laughs> the first one is January, and you'll be able to meet some of the authors that we've um, brought on this show. So it's the same thing, but in print, to give you more opportunity and access to these authors that have come to share their expertise on the show. So thank you so much again. The uh, author today is Sharon Jenkins, and she has a lot of of experience behind that because she builds authors, including organizations. You talked about business owners becoming authors. Um, do you have any kind of tip for those who are in business right now and who haven't published any book and how to use that to, to do a book to um, leverage their business. And when I mean business, I also include non-profit organizations in, in this category because they seem to be the one always struggling with um, ways to raise funds and all of that for their non-profit organization. So actually, that's two different questions. So I'm going to tell you about the business owners first. I don't believe that business owners want to, con you know, write continuously. So most of the time they are writing a book to bring credibility to their business. So they need to write about what they do. So if you're a doctor, if you're a surgeon and you specialize in a certain type of surgery, that's what you need to write about. Or if you want to build a human element into that story, 
then you can talk about testimonials from your patients, of course, with their permission. It builds credibility to your business because it shows the human side of your business. If you're a major corporation and you have lots of folks in your C-suite who are experts in certain areas, as a corporation, a collective compilation of tips, of strategies, success strategies for other corporations, that's a wonderful compilation to put out there. And the money that you generate from that particular book could be used to, to finance your fundraising in the community. You hmm. see where I'm coming from? Yes. If you are a homepreneur or solopreneur or mompreneur, and you want to bring more credibility to what you do, then you put a tips book together. If you're an inspirational writer, then you do a devotional. If you're a teacher, then you do a coloring book. If you are a teacher of teachers, then you do a how to teach book. You see where I'm coming from? Yes. Business owner. I am a writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, publishing service. That's what I do. I provide that. So I write books for authors. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Makes lots of sense, okay? I have a friend down the street who is a beauty consultant. Guess what she should write about? Hmm. Beauty tips for her clients. And then incorporate in their pictures or testimonials of women before and after. Okay? Inspirational. Let's say, unfortunately, this is uh, Domestic Violence uh, Abuse Prevention Month. <laughs> Let's say that was your story. You could write your story to help women or men avoid that happening in their lives. Okay? You ask for business. So let's go to nonprofits and drink some water. Wow. <laughs> for a nonprofit, you serve people as a nonprofit. Client testimonials are those things that will help people pull their checkbook out. People are cause and effect. Sometimes people want to go and do what you do, but they don't have the time, the energy, the patience, the know-how to do those things. So they find an organization that they can financially support. But if all they know is that you provide A, B, C, and D service to this population, that doesn't get me to want to pull out my checkbook. But what does get me to want to pull out my checkbook is the stories of the people that you serve. Hmm. Put a book wow. together with those stories in them and make them a gift to potential funders. Hmm. especially nowadays to put a book together is so cost effective. Mm -hmm. You know, create space has, has made it a new world. You know, <laughs> when it comes to doing those kinds of things. So that, I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did. Wow. Oh, Lord. So who has questions? I see Annette, um, Annette's comment. Thank you so much for commenting, Aneta. The stories of the people I serve get the dollar. Yes. So, um, do you have any questions? If you have questions, please post your questions because we are rounding up here. And remember, go and get the book. Go and get your book. The link is there. And also, if you need coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching to do your book, 
the link to our website to schedule an appointment is there also. So click that link and talk <laughs> to this, you know, genius woman that I have for you today. This is like a great catch from the ocean. I feel like I have a shark. <laughs> I also have an opportunity for your uh, viewers. Shark, this is Shark Tank right here. So, <laughs> I also have an opportunity for your viewers. May I share it? Yes, please. I am looking for bloggers. I'm an editor, a consulting editor for AfroVibesRadio.com, and I am looking for bloggers for AfroVibesRadio.com. So wow. if you're interested, go send me an email at afrovibesblogging at mail.com. Afrovibesblogging at mail.com. And I, we are looking for bloggers. And if you want to get a good start in writing a book, do it one week at a time in a blog. That's another tip. So hmm. you want to write 10 chapters, a 10-chapter book, write 10 blogs. Wow. Thank you, what? Aneta, for sharing. Wow, wow. And I saw Dr. Taina click like, thank you for stopping by, Dr. Taina. <laughs> She's at the book fair right now. <laughs> I'm heading to the book fair after this. Wow. 10 chapters equals 10 no yes 10 blogs equals 10 chapters i love that <laughs> i love that i love that oh you share so much great tips with us and i wish i could keep you here forever <laughs> i would love to stay here forever but as you can see i have to think. <laughs> and i do hope I do hope that you, you are going to come back on this show. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Please. I will be glad to do that. I will be back on this show. So thank you so much for coming on the show again, my fabulous people. Go get that book and see all the great tips she has shared. Oh, Lord. It's a lot. This is Shark Tank that you got right here today. <laughs> it's my honor to do so. <laughs> So many opportunities for here and many tips that you can take advantage of and go get that book also or go to our website and click to set up an appointment with us <laughs> on that note do you have any last words for our audience today well what i would say to our audience today you know what if you have a book in you it would be a shame for you to go away from the world and not write that book. Write the book, baby! If you need some help, I'm the literary midwife. I'll help you. I promise you. And one of the beautiful things about me is I have a team and I will take your book and make it comparable to anything you will find in a bookstore. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, thank you so much. So, what? Oh, I know you showed me. You said it earlier. So, um, for lipstick, I'm wearing two. Oh, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> me and Firecracker by Mary Kay. Oh, Mary Kay, Mary Kay. We need we need to get Mary Kay to sponsor this show. <laughs> we are wearing Mary Kay to this show. Mary Kay, <laughs> your cracker. Wow, <laughs> nice. So um, I'm wearing. Those of you who have been following, you should know this by now. Sapphire Siren by Maybelline. Eight three five. Oh. That's the color number. Oh, yes. it's very it's beautiful. Thank Ooh, you, Mary. Looking this good. Five zero three C, and this one is wet and wild. So it's the one inside, you know, the the lighter one. Yeah, that is this. Oh, very good. Then, yes, my uh, Sapphire Siren is kind of purple. So that is this one. So thank you, thank you so much. So now um, 
you know, as we round up, we round up with the music. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greater. I love it. again for coming on the show we are really glad to have you and all our viewers here thank you so much for joining those of you who joined us live and those who will be joining the replay and those of you who are watching at home or on youtube thank you so much for watching and if you would like to be on the show as an author please send an email to info at bukolaoriola.com god bless you until next time stay safe Stay super fabulous. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Hey, my name is Bukola. I want to invite you, if you have not already done so, to subscribe to this channel. This is my YouTube channel. I want you to subscribe. I need you to subscribe to this channel for inspirational videos, for beauty videos, for motivational videos, you know, for videos that will inspire you that will make you take action to realize your goals and your life dreams thank you so much and god bless you wow how was that <laughs> i told you <laughs> so many tips so many tips she shared in even tips for businesses tips for corporations tips for non-profit organization Do you have a non-profit organization and you are struggling about ideas for fundraising you can use book to fundraise get together and do a book and that book can become an avenue for another stream of income for your non-profit organization so i would like to thank you all all our audience turning the live show on facebook and our audience on youtube and those of you at home on channel 14 thank you so much for following this show god bless you if you have questions comments and suggestions please send me a message at info at bukolaoriola.com and if you are not yet following me on facebook and youtube i invite you to follow me on youtube and on Facebook and be a part of the live conversation so you can get your tip right there on the spot and uh, I wish you the best and I hope to see you next time on Monday motivation with Bukola God bless you and bye bye <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.